So long it's time to do chain drive and maybe talk about wheels a little bit. Let me get some of these parts out of our way. On your new gas scooter, your factory wheel looks like this. In order to take apart a wheel like this, you would uh, either hang your wheel like this and take off the nut that holds on your brake. Once you have that nut off, you can pull your shell off and your wheel is free. Uh, but this is an aluminum wheel. In order to get your wheel apart on this Cobra gas scooter, you'll have to take, or Nuke gas scooter, sorry, you'll have to take a punch if I can find it. it. Must be over here. In order to take a pretend like this aluminum wheel right now is this factory wheel. Once you have the brake shell off, in order to get the inner brake off, you can take a punch and drive your brake drum counterclockwise until your brake comes off. Then you have access to the bolt. But on the other side, you can use a punch just like that, but sometimes we found it near impossible to get the uh, sprocket off of the wheel uh, simply by using the punch in the brake stem uh, tool there. So, we developed a new tool at scooter.com. If you take your axle nut loose and unload your axle, so it's not, so the axle's not sticking out of the wheel. We have this tool where you uh, set it down over the nuts and impact that sprocket off. Those work really good. I recommend anybody who has a new gas scooter have that tool. Um, but we're not, so we're talking about wheels there, but we're also fixing to talk about chain drive. Uh, here's an example of that, uh, how that sprocket spins off. With that tool on there and the axle out, then you can, Spin your sprocket off and get to the bolts on both sides with the brake drum removed and the sprocket removed. So if you have that kind of uh, wheel and you're going to chain drive, then you would take, uh, save this piece uh, from your existing sprocket and you could use your factory screws that that came with to attach a sprocket um, or you can use the uh, heavy duty hardware kit for chain drive uh, that's orderable at scootar.com and it has a hardened bolt and uh, stainless steel nuts, a flat nut and a lock nut. Um, if you've got a version with bigger tires you can see where how we've used that same kit here. Probably have to get an angle down in from behind. Uh, they're bolted to this star flange by putting those studs in from the back of the flange and getting them tight and then putting a flat nut and then the sprocket and then the lock nut. So this same hardware kit would work for a non-spin-on uh, sprocket mount and a star-shaped mount that's part of the sprocket. The same hardware kit works for both models and what we're talking about is models that would have come with a bigger tire like this that have a star-shaped uh, sprocket recess. So um, if you have one with a star-shaped sprocket recess you may not be able to go with an aluminum wheel unless you decide to go chain drive. Um, the Nuke gas scooter factory gear ratio is 20 teeth to 60 teeth. That's a 1 to 3 ratio. So when we go chain drive, we would go 12 to 36, which would be the same as the factory gear ratio. But if you want more torque, you could go with a 40 tooth or you could go with a 45, 45 tooth and I don't recommend it on these small tires but we also do have 48 and even 52 teeth which are for models with bigger tires but nonetheless um, you do have sprocket options there plus you could go with a 13 tooth sprocket on your shaft uh, for torque as well these are 12 so with your shaft out of your bike and your new sprocket mounted up then you can spin that back on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and upgrade this one to aluminum wheels so we won't be using any of those spin on sprockets. And with the uh, drive shaft removed from the bike, with the sprocket still on, there's a snap ring in that groove. Remove that snap ring and then uh, uh, mount it in a bench vise catching that sprocket and gently drive the uh, sprocket off the shaft. Once you have the sprocket off the shaft, then you'll be able to install your chain drive. 
and you'll want to line up uh, this uh, set screw may catch up here and maybe on the corner of there but you want to line one, line it up there just in case so um, we found that taking a a, a, a socket now in preparation for this video to make this sprocket go on real easy because once previously we had a hell of a time getting that sprocket to go on it's such a tight fit we actually took a file and rubbed the uh, sprocket mounting portion of the shaft making sure there was no high edges there and just trying to smooth it up so that this procedure would go really easy and after doing so it went on a lot easier so um, holding it in your hand I found that I was able to drive it on pretty much where I needed it. Now we may still I guess we're going to set it all the way in and hope that that's the right alignment. If not, we can always push the sprocket back out and get it to align the way we need it. Lock it down. Once that's locked down, we do recommend welding this sprocket to your shaft so that it doesn't turn. I would not rely on these set screws. After it's been welded, I would take your set screws back out. So we'll put a, a gentle torque on there. These set screws are uh, a 1 8 Allen. These are non-metric screws because these are American made sprockets. So we'll lightly snug those to hold the sprocket in, in a place. Uh, actually you could leave them loose and let it track around the chain and let the chain determine where the sprocket's going to ride and then tighten them down. But we'll lightly snug those there. Uh, now I guess also here, uh, these wheel kits, let's talk about these aluminum wheels. Um, over here folks, we have the uh, aluminum wheel kit laid out. The two halves of your wheel are held together with three bolts. The longer side of the shaft comes out on your sprocket side, and that's also where this little spacer goes. It comes with five different nuts. Usually it's one of the two shortest nuts on the outside of the brake drum, and a bigger one behind it. Uh, we did have one, I think this one we're fixing to do actually has a thick nut on the outside of the brake drum rather than one of these two thin ones, but nonetheless it comes with the five bolts for shimming, uh, the five bolts for holding the uh, chain drive sprocket or plastic sprocket to the star hub, and then it comes with the six bolts for mounting the star hub to the wheel and two new axle nuts. It does not come with a valve stem extender or chain adjusters. But moving right along um, on this type of wheel, in order to uh, take the wheel apart, it could be rather tricky, so we don't recommend uh, lock tightening these bolts, just getting them good and tight in case you need to take them apart to change tires, change flats, or whatever. If this never had to come off again, we would lock tight it, but it does have to come off to do flat tire service. So. Um, there are other videos where we show disassembly of the whole rear wheel. There's Cobra gas scooter rear wheel disassembly. So if you really want to watch having that wheel disassembled start to finish, there we do have a video for that. Um, sometimes these valve stems are not in the right location on the spin-on. The hole ends up being over here and it's at an angle, so you may have to re-drill a hole. You can see this one's already cocked at a little bit of an angle. None of that's an issue with these uh, star types. So you can uh, pick one that lines up uh, real well with your valve stem extender. That one's kind of to the side, so let's go to the next position. That one's probably right in the middle. There's, I won't keep going around just to see what it does. That one's to the left. Uh, that one's not even doable. And that one's not doable. And that one's to the right, so it's this one here is the best one. About right in the middle. So. So if you get an aluminum wheel, it comes with its own hardware kit for mounting the sprocket. Possibly you can reuse the factory ones if you're doing the spin-on method, if you're reusing that. But we do have the factory bolts and screws if you just want factory uh, bolts, nuts, and washers for the uh, spin-on flange as well. On our wheel on this new gas scooter, uh, the two thin nuts that one of them is usually on the outside of the brake drum, or actually we have the thick and two fins there is just how it came out 
which we're glad we did all that work off camera to save time. Get a light snug on all of them before tightening any of them probably. And then since we're not putting lock tight, well, not till it slips like I did that one. I probably just strip the head of that one. Make sure you've got a good allen wrench that isn't rounded off so it has a good tight fit or cock it at an angle in the allen hole so that it makes sure that it grabs real good. So you'll have to reuse your chain adjusters and your valve and extender when you're upgrading to that wheel. But now we've got our chain uh, drive wheel sprocket mounted and we can go ahead and get ready to reinstall our wheel. Hmm. So with the uh, wheel adjusters relaxed and the wheel pushed as far forward as it'll go on the bike, which actually has to put this nut on first. it is trying to, when it's all the way on the outside, hit the back of that kickstand. So probably just lightly snug or finger tight with the wheel forward. And then you can pr proceed from uh, replacing your factory shaft uh, with sprocket on it to one with the uh, chain drive sprocket on it. Now, when we get the shaft back up in here, um, None of these scooters come with this space, so they're supposed to have it. Uh, let me see. With the uh, uh, shaft up in the bike, there's bearings on both ends and snap rings that hold it in place. Well, the shaft will spin inside this bearing if you don't have some type of spacer here uh, between the pulley. Between the pulley and the uh, bearing, there should be some type of spacer, or if not, that shaft's just going to spin inside the bearing like it's uh, trying to do right now. Felt like it. Yeah, I can spin the shaft inside the bearing. So that's just going to wear that shaft down and destroy uh, what's currently an $80 shaft. And I've been quoted much higher on a reproduction. So we're trying to keep you from buying an $80 shaft by using a $10 spacer. This would be by Scudar.com Type 1 Drive Shaft Spacer. And that takes up that space between the bearing and sprocket. And, and sandwiches all that down so that the uh, shaft, the bearing has to turn with the shaft and so you don't gauge your shaft. You also have the option of going with type 3 spacer, which is instead of going with that type 1 spacer, uh, once you get your snap ring in on a new Cobra Rock type model, Cobra Commuter, once you get the uh, bearing in and the snap ring in, then a short spacer, and then a second bearing, and then your pulley. So that's the two different options you have uh, for spacers is type 1 or type 3 with an extra bearing. So that's all about spacers there. Then also we mentioned on our belt drive replacement video, uh, on this on the right side tube you don't ever have to take the snap ring out, but, uh, but you might want to take the cover off to drive your shaft through. Um, so uh, Removal of the shaft, we have a video called Cobra Gas Scooter Drive Shaft Removal, uh, but you just might watch the reverse of this in, uh, installation to uh, understand disassembly. So with your bearing on your shaft there, if I can get it to go on there, yeah, you probably want to do what I just do. Maybe gentle taps might be more. And a snug fit on some of those. So um, you can take a little grease and put it up in this tube on the other side against the snap ring to hold this wave washer in place. So with this, uh, I meant to zip tie those wires out of the way while we had the wheel out. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and do that and be done with it. 
Okay, we had a problem earlier with our kill switch wiring being too long. So to make sure that it doesn't rub against the drive shaft while we're in there, um, we're going to zip tie it up to the fuel line. Keep that all out of the way. Maybe put two of them in there even. Oops, I'm going to get one. So there's our uh, uh, kill switch wiring all out of the way now with the zip ties, making sure it's not rubbing the shaft. Now we can go back to what we were doing, which was installing chain drive to this new gas scooter, also known as Lowrider Rock or Stand R. Okay, with our wave washer up in the frame, we're going to take our drive shaft with our sprocket gently mounted, not welded, or final position determined yet. Stick it up in from the bottom, out the body, and push to the right against that wave washer and snap ring, wiggling it into place to get it seated. Then we'll come in and put our left side, ooh, crank, uh, left side bearing in, and we'll start the installation of our snap ring. With snap ring pliers, if you don't have snap ring pliers, you can take a pair of needle nose and put a little hook type niche in there with the corner of a grinder wheel. And those work as good or better than snap ring pliers. So if you have a bench grinder and a pair of needle nose, you can make a pair of snap ring pliers if you don't already have one. Then with a flat tip screwdriver or an Allen head or a punch, uh, drive your snap ring in until it clicks into its recessive groove. Make sure that that's hidden in its groove because the shaft can walk across in the body and tear up belts and stuff if you don't have that in right. Then once you've got your drive shaft installed there, then put in your type 1 or type 3 spacer with the bearing. And then your 4 millimeter pulley keyway. And we do have uh, factory sprockets like what come with your new scooter or we do have a one piece chrome metal which uh, I don't know where one's at right now. I guess uh, some of these other bikes around here have one piece chrome metal sprockets on them. And we have that featured in other videos. You can see the Scudar chromed metal one piece sprocket. And uh, don't expect I'll be taking this apart anytime soon. Uh, seeing as how I can, my sprockets is fitting good on the shaft where I can reposition it if you. Uh, if it was a really, really, really tight fit, you may not want to go ahead and lock tight this up um, in case uh, you needed to take it back apart just to get the sprocket in the right position. And for right now, we'll leave that loose so that we can work with it. But once we get the chain done, then we'll put our belt and belt cover and foot board back on. So then take your chain, get it over the top there. I can't pull it to that next tooth, so I let it relax on and it's a perfect fit. Um, if you, uh, some of, sometimes we don't have the chain cut perfectly to the length because it's a universal kit. Uh, for the low riders, we do actually just happen to have it in low riders and nuke screws, we actually happen to have it cut right. But um, if you uh, need to uh, trim your chain because it's too long, then what we recommend is taking a grinder and grinding the pins flat and getting into that link a little bit like actually you wouldn't cut that one like let's say you needed uh, one two links that's two inners two outers off you would grind that pin flat and grind that pin flat 
and then use some type of chain breaker to uh, push the pin out. This the chain breaker is actually designed to push the pin out and then you actually are supposed to be able to reinstall it. Well, that'd be great to have a chain with no master links and if you want to try it, more power to you. But we don't seem to have much problem with the master links themselves. So, um, much of any problem. The proper way to install a master link is to, uh, the, the master link is kind of like a little Pac-Man in that or an alligator, it's got a mouth to it. So with your master link, you've got the, the master link retainer clip. And how that gets installed is from the back side, you put the master link in. So that would be from the back side, put the master link in. and rotate it around to where you're not having a sprocket interfere and link it on. Then take your figure eight link and place it over the two studs and then take your alligator or seek type clip. Now if you have it on like this, if the wheel's going forward, you're riding the scooter, that's mouth forward. So if it gets hit, it's gonna knock it on, right? If it gets hit on anything, it's actually gonna knock it on. So the wrong way to put this on would be like this. If anything hits this clip as the wheel's turning, it could pop that off and take your master link apart. So this is wrong with the mouth facing the direction of rotation. This is right with the mouth facing away from the direction of rotation. So with the master link uh, clip there held in place, then take a pair of pliers and squeeze and pop it in place. Once you've got that, then you can come back and adjust your wheel. Adjust your uh, wheel, you might want to notice if these legs are farther forward than the other. If they were perfectly in the same position, then you might could uh, adjust these uh, tensioners evenly. But uh, adjust this uh, side primarily and leave this side a little bit behind it. Once you get the right, uh, approximately the right chain adjustment, then you may want to close, try to close match in that, match this side to the same. And what you're looking for is uh, back over here on this side, uh, you see that much uh, uh, looseness there? That's probably okay, but a lot more might be too loose. But what you need to check is rotate it and check it and rotate it and check it. You see how little movement there is there. So, it's, it's, you know, as best as we can, nothing's warped or egg-shaped, but you still get tight, loose, tight, loose. So something's off-center slightly. Uh, I don't know why. But anyway, so when you get, when you find one spot on the chain that's pretty tight, then that's good. Even though when you turn it, you have more and more. Don't, don't adjust it tight here, because then by the time you get around to that really tight spot, it'll be too tight, wherever that was at. So keep checking it and go with uh, calling your adjustment the tightest spot there, and you'll be good. Then go ahead and lock down your axle nuts and your brake stay bolt on this side um, and we do recommend uh, Lucas brand chain lube so once you get your uh, chain installed you want to regularly lube your chain with Lucas chain lube um, available at finer auto parts stores so I'm going to try not to make a big mess all over this sheet because I really don't want to wash chain, wash, ugh, wash chain lube off this sheet so I'm going to grab a paper towel since we are in the house tonight So uh, you may, there's supposed to be, oh there, there was a straw on it, I wonder what happened to this straw. Well it's a lot more helpful with a straw, you can lay the straw on the chain or you can lay the nozzle right on the sprocket. Ooh. And you probably want to uh, lube your chain regularly. Maybe not every time you ride, but uh, it depends on how long and hard you ride. Uh, if you're riding every day, you may want to uh, lube it a couple times a week, two, three times a week. 
Uh, if not, maybe every other time, depending on how long you ride, every other, every third time you ride, you may want to lube it. So there's chain lube there. Now that you've got your chain all uh, tightened up and installed and your rear uh, wheel located, then you can install your belt cover. These belt covers are best when they have a flat washer on the outside and a lock washer on the backside on the bottom. And on the top, a flat washer on the outside and a flat washer on the backside. Easiest to put on by starting on the bottom. Excuse me. Got that on tape. In the future, we will. We uh, uh, just ran out of chrome belt covers, but we still do have a couple of blue and mostly burgundy uh, covers for these scooters. Um, but we are soon to re uh, have uh, powder coated redesigned belt covers. Uh, that may be a little bit heavier duty um, than the factory covers. So, with uh, the bottom lightly snug and the top uh, a little loose, you can come to the top and look and make sure that your uh, belt, or your belt cover is not too close one way or the other. Center it up there with the bottom lightly snug. Then go ahead and crank your top one tight. And then do a final tighten on your bottom bolt there. And also required with the installation of your chain drive kits from Scudar.com would be to weld the shaft to the bearing there. So we're fixing to do that. Once it's welded, we'll back the set screws out. Yeah, uh, three to four welds is what we've done before. As you can see now, the shaft and the sprocket are one together so they can't separate. There and you'll have a good strong shaft assembly with permanently mounted <laughs> sprocket. You can grind these welds loose and replace the sprocket if need be if your shaft is still in good condition, but it takes quite a bit to wear out one of these sprockets if you keep your chain adjusted properly and keep it lubricated. Then after you've had your sprocket welded to your shaft, you want to remove the two set screws. Uh, we have left them in before an accident and eventually they did spit out, but uh, go ahead and remove those and then paint the weld to prevent rust. We should have put it in the sunlight, huh? <laughs> Yeah, the light's real good there when there, I got a better angle. It's pretty much showing it. The set screws are no longer needed. They were just to hold the sprocket in place during the weld. And then some type of paint to prevent the corrosion because all uh, welds, unless made of stainless steel and the metal stainless steel, will rust.
I guess if we take it for a ride now, if there's a bunch of pain there, it might kind of fling all over. <laughs> Put gas in it and fire it up. Try it up. Let's try it up. <laughs> One super nuke scooter coming right up. I guess an additional note, folks, is some people fill their gas tank all the way full, and the dome on your cap, if it's down in the fuel, as the fuel expands in the heat, it'll weep out of the hole in the top. So unless you're about to take off on a long ride, we recommend leaving an inch to an inch and a half air void in your tank to allow for fuel expansion. So, uh, or if you have one of the models with a tank twice the size, you may want to just run it half full unless you're going to take off on a really long ride. So we're just going to fill it half full to test it today. That's probably good. And then on your high performance Walbro 700 carburetor, to choke it is down. Um, one to three pulls, uh, it should stumble one time and then the choke can go off after it's stumbled one time. We hit the prime? Uh, yeah, I guess we do need to prime it up, don't we? And if it doesn't prime up, we'll pull the uh, pull cord a couple times and see if that'll allow it to prime up. There Sounds like it's be. trying. Yep, there it is. All the and air the, out of the line. And, yeah, and, and pull the pull cord once or twice, or a couple times and then prime it again. Harder. Huh, you think you would have heard it hit off by now? Okay. It should start up now. It should be prone, huh? Yeah, I didn't ever hear it stumble, so pull yeah. it again until you hear it. Yeah, until okay. it stumbles. 